Finding Happy, Seven Steps to Relationships That Will Not Steal Your Joy is the new book by me, Nikita Banks, a licensed psychotherapist and life strategist. Leverage the knowledge you'll receive in this book to help you with the process of obtaining absolute clarity through the use of guided self-exploration. This process is necessary to help you master all your relationships in 2019 and beyond. Go on Amazon.com or BlackTherapistPodcast.com and grab your copy of the book guaranteed to help you redesign all your relationships based on two basic principles, health and happiness. Get your copy today. Welcome to the Black Therapist Podcast. The Black Therapist Podcast is a podcast where we discuss the unique issues people of color face when dealing with mental health issues and mental health diagnosis. Now, if you are new to our show, I am your host, author, life strategist, and psychotherapist, Nikita Banks, in private practice in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. I am available for both psychotherapy and coaching sessions, and you can find more information about that on my website, NikitaBanks.com. You can listen to our podcast everywhere podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, Pippa, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and BlackTherapistPodcast.com. If you are a mental health advocate or a therapist and you want to buy our podcast merchandise, you can do so by visiting our site. And if you want access to our free mental health tips, free online trainings, discounted selective services, and resources, do so by joining our mailing list by texting "get happy" all one word to six six eight six six. If you love the podcast, please like, comment, and share. We love to hear from you, and if you want to send me some feedback, guest suggestions, or simply to say hey, you can contact us at our website, BlackTherapistPodcast.com. Please be mindful that this episode and all of the information that we provide here is just a resource and a tool to help get you started on your mental health journey. If you are feeling any mental health distress or you are having any significant issues, please feel free to reach out to us so that we can find you a mental health provider in your area. Okay, let's go. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Black Therapist Podcast. Okay. So, uh, earlier in the season on our season season premiere I premiered an episode or not episode a new segment called what would you do and I ask you different scenarios that I want to know if you have an opinion on how you would handle it or how you deal with it when it comes up in your own life and then we'll talk about maybe healthy solutions or healthier ways to deal with it right well we continue the conversation throughout the week on social media so one episode ago Not the last episode, but the episode before that, I forgot what the question was. (laughs) So someone asked me this question um, and I'm just paraphrasing right now because I don't have it in front of me. But the question was basically, if having children was important to you in your relationship, would you have a baby with somebody prior to marriage just to make sure that all of their equipment worked? So if you came to me as a as a therapy client. And let's say if you came in couples counseling and 100% one of you are ready to have a baby and 100% another one of you are not ready to have a baby, I would just say go for fertility testing, right? I mean, you don't actually have to try out the plumbing to make sure that it works. And I kind of think that it's very manipulative to be like, okay, I just want to have a baby now just to make sure everything works. What if the relationship doesn't work? What if the commitment is not strong enough to withstand what happens when you have a baby? What if the person that you knew prior to being a a father or a spouse or in that kind of like forever, ever commitment leaves you like what, what, what does that what kind of position does that put you in? Like, I don't think that is wise to make permanent decisions off of temporary feelings. Shout out to the little girl that said that on. Uh, teen moms one time I saw that and I was like oh my god that's so brilliant but it's a really good quote right I mean I don't know I mean I'm a different I'm, I'm in a different area of my life right now just thinking about having a baby breaks me out in hives but I'm just saying like why why would you even if it was a thousand percent important to you a hundred thousand percent a non-negotiable that you guys have babies go get tested, go freeze your eggs, go, go and figure out if their plumbing works. I mean, there are, that's what health insurance is for. No doctors, fertility experts, 
urologists, like there are so many other ways to figure out if it works rather than just having a baby. So I don't know. Somebody posed that question to me online. I completely forgot what the question was, so I didn't answer it in last week's episode, but I remembered in my boudoir (laughs) what the question was. I was like, what was that question? That's what the question was. So if you have a question that you would like to submit to us for what would you do if you have a scenario or something that's coming up in your own life and you want to discuss that on the show, please feel free to submit it at blacktherapistpodcast.com. And you can just go into the content, what is it, the contact me section and drop the comments in there or subscribe to the email, shoot me an email at NikitaBanks.com. Okay, and Nikita spelled N-I-K-I-T-A-B-A-N-K-S, just like the song by Elton John and just like the TV show and the movie. Okay, yes, there was a TV show and a movie about a dope ass assassin named Nikita. Shout out to my mother and father for that. Okay, so on... The previous week's episode, I feel like I'm speedballing. I'm talking really, really fast. I did have coffee today, but that's a whole nother matter. Um, on, on last week's episode, we the question was, how would you approach somebody who hurts your feelings? Let's say if there was an event or a graduation, a life event, baby shower, birthday party, a funeral, anything that you know, you expect people to show up in your life for that you sh- wait, 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 hold on. Sorry. Let me clean that up. Any of large event, a, a, a life altering or a life event that happens and you expect your friends to show up for you and they don't friends, family member, whoever, and they don't show up for you in the ways that you show up for them. Like, how would you approach that? And how would you deal with that? Okay. So if you came to me for for counseling, we would explore why it's important for you to focus on the person that didn't show up as opposed to the people that did. Because a lot of times we, we, we practice, um, our emotional, not practice. We base our emotional stability on the people that don't show up from us. And we operate from a space of deficit more than we operate from a space of abundance. And if you're always operating from a space of deficit, what you don't have, what the person's shortcomings is, um, you know, traits that you don't like, those are the things I believe, I believe in the laws of attraction. Those are the things that you, you attract more of in your life. And not only that, but that's what you're focused on. If you're only focused on the negatives that I don't have the money or I'm broke or, uh, you know, my, my brother didn't love me. You have a whole wedding full of people, but your mama didn't show up and that just ruined your whole day. Like all of those things, it can eat you up inside and it robs you of the, the mindset and the mastery of being able to look at a situation from, I don't say a glass half full perspective, but really a glass half full. And knowing that you have, you have more than you lack. And so I would ask you to at least refocus your attention on the things that you have and let's practice, practice being grateful. And I hate the way that sounds. It's like, oh, you're ungrateful. No, I mean, I want you to at least, at least first focus on the spaces where you can find gratitude in your day, because it, it, it refocuses your energy it focus refocuses your emotions it makes you feel better to think about the people that actually showed up for you and genuinely loved you as opposed to the people who haven't shown up for you in your life and then I would help you decompress right it may be it may be time for you to renegotiate that relationship. It may be time for you to decide whether or not that person is somebody that you can continue to engage in and support the way that you continue to engage in and support. It may just be like, you know what, this this friend has lost its its you its usefulness or her usefulness or his usefulness. Maybe the place that I pos- position this person in my life is not the place that they've earned or deserve to be or no longer have the capacity to serve in. I'm no longer going to continue to go to my mechanic to fix my car. If every time I go to my mechanic to fix my car, it comes out worse than when it went in. I'm not going to continue to go to, you know, 
my dry cleaner if when I get my clothes, they're still dirty. So why are you still allowing people to have have jobs and roles in your life in ways that they can no longer show up for you or no longer want to or don't have the capacity? Or they may not even have the emotional capacity. They're friends that I've had to kind of take a step back from. Not that I don't love them. Not that I don't care about them. Not that... um. Not that I won't engage with them at some some other point in my life, but I've always left the door open that if they if they come to me with an open heart, ready to proceed in a relationship because they haven't done it, done anything bad to me, that we can move forward when that time comes. But there are sometimes that people have their own emotional stuff that they're dealing with. They Everybody has their own life issues. And I would also ask you, I don't know. I feel like I I don't, I hope this doesn't sound uncompassionate because these are conversations that I've had to have with myself. I don't know if that's a real word. Y'all look it up. Um, (laughs) But I don't know if this, this, this sounds like I don't have sympathy for somebody when, when they feel this way, but I've had to do this work. Ooh, I'm getting emotional. I've had to do this work in my own life. I feel like I'm crying every show. Is that a thing? No, I'm not crying yet, but I'm saying I'm just like that touched me. That touched me in my in my private spots <laughs> when I said that. Like I've had to do this work, and but one of my clients came in and said something very profound to me, and which was, I'm sometimes afraid to do the work because I'm I'm some times afraid that if I do the work, I'm going to have to follow through with the consequences. And I immediately knew what she, what she meant, because that's most of the reason why a lot of us don't do our self work. That's why a lot of us don't, we aren't introspective and we, we won't examine what the problems are in our life and in our relationships and how we show up for other people and how other people show up for us. Because if we really truly did look at what that means and how the metrics by which we judge our friendships and the standards that we have for those relationships, we would leave them. Or we have to ask ourselves, what is wrong with me that I stay in this relationship that doesn't serve me? And so I usually look at it from my ownest perspective, meaning that you have to decide what you will and won't engage in. And if this person is somebody that hurt you deeply, you have every right to be able to voice your opinion. A mature, uh, an emotionally evolved person goes to the person and says, hey, you know, I am upset with you because this happened. And, and keep it to the facts of the thing. You called me eight times and told me you was on your way to my birthday party and then you never showed up. And then I didn't hear from you for days. That kind of sucks, right? Keep it on the thing and not your feelings. I, I mean, I felt like you disrespected me because of the, that. those kind of conversations really, really don't go anywhere and they, they're not productive. But if you say, hey, you called me eight times, I'm speaking to somebody in particular and you told me that you was on your way <laughs> to my birthday dinner. I'm, I'm, I'm giving subs. Okay. No, I'm just joking. Um, but you know, if, if somebody was supposed to show up for you and they said that they would, and you thought that they were, were going to, and you adjusted your time schedule and your, your night because of that, and then they didn't show up for you. You have every right to go to them and say, Hey, you know what? This is what happened and allow them to say, to apologize I got shout out to Goody Garnett because Goody's like, I only got five apologies a year, which I was like, that's crazy. But I get it. I'm not apologies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She says she doesn't say I'm sorry, which is a good thing because I don't feel like I'm not a sorry human being. And so and words have power, but you can't apologize for bad behavior, or apologize for wronging somebody or making somebody feel some sort of way that was not your intention. But give them the opportunity to apologize. And a, a real true apology is I apologize. This is how we will, you know, move going forward and keep your word. I hate when people apologize and there's no resolution. Oh, that drives me crazy. I don't want you to apologize to me about my feelings. I apologize if you felt like that. That ain't a real apology. I apologize and for what I did and that will never happen again. I apologize that I didn't show up for you. This is what happened in my life at the time. I, I'm completely sorry. It was not my intention to make you feel that way. I've, I truly love you and I value you. 
And going forward, if I have any kind of issues or if I'm going to miss anything, I will give you the courtesy of calling you and letting you know. Boom. That's how you give an apology. All right. So um, I had a question for this week. I don't remember what it was. It was it was ratchetness, y'all. It was straight ratchetness off the Internet because I be in these groups and I be seeing these questions. I'm in one now. Nope. Mm -mm. That ain't I'm not going to even. That ain't a question. Uh -huh. So the question that I have is a scenario. So the, the what would you do if, right, for this week is, let's say you have prior knowledge that your girlfriend, boyfriend, or partner was in the planning stages of committing, you know, a, a, a cheat, a, a, a meetup, a hookup, a cheat date, whatever it is, and you knew, how would you approach that? And I'm going to give you some, some variables. Would you A, follow them? And then, ooh, that sounds a little crazy. I'm judging you if you say follow them, but that's all right, because I might follow them too. Um, would you A, follow them to the rendezvous spot if you have the information, B, confront them beforehand so that it would not happen and you stop it, or C, just allow it to happen and then confront them after? Like, what would you do? Okay, so that's the, the scenario and the situation for this week. But we're going to get right into this week's episode. So there was a, there was a, oh, if you want to buy one of the t-shirts, go on the website, Black Therapist Podcast Shop, get a t-shirt, a hoodie, it's hoodie season. Those therapy for the cultures is my, that's my favorite. I can't really say I have a favorite. It's like saying I have a favorite child, but that's probably the sweatshirt that I, nope, I wear black woman healer more than anything. Um, but yeah, and if you bought a, a shirt or sweatshirt or hoodie in the past, post it on social media and tag me. We will repost it and tag your account and you will get an extra coupon code for your next purchase off the website. Okay. And then we have in a sale, you $75 extra, you get, I mean, you spend $75, you get a bag. And I think it's 10% off the whole store if you are on our mailing list. Okay. Now that the commercial stuff is out of the way. Um, so there's a, a article going around the internet that I really wanted to touch on and I'm going to flip it. So it's the title of the article is called why having a vent buddy is important to your health. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing because I just don't care. <laughs> having a friend who listens, no matter how overwhelming your rants or situation in life are, is undeniably good for you and your health. So keep that friend. As a woman, especially when you're already a mom, it's inevitable, inevitable that at some point you go through a series of tough situations, which you try to bottle up until you can no longer handle them. That's the first thing that's wrong. This is when calling a friend or event buddy comes in. Event buddy is someone you consider a reliable friend whom you can go to whenever you want someone to talk to whom won't judge you. Okay. That someone is the person who will listen to your woes, no matter how serious or petty they are. According to experts, having a event buddy is good for your mental health. Here are some reasons why it will help you cope. You realize someone is willing to help. You will see a new perspective. You will be able to practice empathy. Okay, so this 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 article, I didn't read all of it. I just kind of read the highlights. I think why this, this article kind of touched me in a way, because it's been going around in a lot of the women's groups that I'm in. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, et cetera, on the internet. I don't want to be your vent buddy. And here's why. Number one, I'm a therapist in private practice here in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. I'm like, I'm licensed to several different states. I'm booked, busy and blessed, thank God. But I, I listen to a lot of people vent in my work life. So when I come home, I don't really want to vent. I don't even like to speak on the phone in my personal life. I really just like to 
try to practice self-care in, in, in the other areas of my life. So there are things that, and people and, and things that go on in my life that I don't have no choice, but to hold space for like my kid and my partner some days. But I mean, I'm real good at sending people to the, to voicemail. Sorry if I sent you the voicemail, but I have an excuse. I'm a therapist. I can't be on my phone at work. That's what I tell people. But it's, I mean, it's true, but you know, I'm, I'm sometimes reticent to call people back and I, and I, it, it takes me a while because people like to vent to me because of what I do for a living. And it makes having boundaries and, and practicing self-care for me a challenge. So I guess when I read vent buddy, it, it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. The second thing is that usually a vent buddy is a one way relationship. I have I have multiple friends who call me and vent. As soon as I get on the phone, it's like rapid fire, just verbal diarrhea coming at me, problem, 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 problem. And I have to like sit and listen to them. And usually it's the same exact problems. They don't want solutions. They don't want to fix it. They just want to complain, 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 complain. I, in my own personal life, I don't really have a lot of patience or tolerance for that. And it's not that I don't love them and it's not that I don't want to listen. It's not that I don't, I don't care. But at some point we have to be autonomous with our decisions. At some points we have to take responsibility for our life. At some point you can't keep doing the same thing year after year after year, decade after decade, getting the same results and not, and and whining about it. Like I'm going to have to believe that you're okay with this situation Because you're sitting in it, you're wallowing in it, you're married to the narrative, you're married to this story, and you're not willing to do anything to get out of it. And I understand depression and I understand anxiety and I understand having emotional dysregulation issues. I understand all of those things at work. I understand those things. But in my own, excuse me, in my own personal life, it becomes very difficult for me to be able to kind of navigate that. And I'm an empath. So a lot of times, I think I've said this before on the show. I know I've said it before on the show. Any days that there have been days that I've seen over, Ooh, in my old job, wow, I used to see mad clients, like nine people in groups, um, maybe seven clients a day. On top of that, like that was a lot of energy and issues and problems and emotions that I needed to make space for on a daily basis. And I don't see that many clients now, but on any given day in my, in my group practice, I mean, in my private practice and in my consulting work, I may see a maximum of 11 clients a day. That's a lot for me. So to come home and then listen to other people's problems, OPP, it it becomes a lot. And very rarely in my own personal life outside of my partner, not even my son, nobody really asked me how I'm doing. How was your day? What did you, what did you have going on? Did you eat? And I'm not a venter. Like sometimes I like to just tell little little tales of, you know, something that, that B word on my job did or whatever. Like sometimes I might've just rant about certain stuff. Or if you riding in a car with me, you're going to hear some F bombs and some, some B words and a whole bunch of stuff because New York city traffic will take me there. Right. But in my, my own life, usually I'm measured. I'm, I'm, you know, even killed emotionally, like in my, my regular life, like there's not a lot that gets a rise out of me. So I don't really vent a lot. But I I don't, I, I I think that that becomes a part of the problem as well. Like when somebody is venting to you and they're dumping on you emotionally all the time, you're just on an an emotional garbage dump for all of their stuff and they don't want a resolution and they don't want advice. I'm not even talking about judgment, but they don't even want advice. They don't want help. They don't want assistance. They just want to keep telling you the same stories over and over and over and over and over and over again you start to take that on emotionally. And uh, like I said, the majority of the time, these are people taking from you. 
or, or dumping on you, but not, not asking you anything. Not how are you? How was your day? How are you feeling? What's going on with you? It becomes very emotionally draining. And what we, we often do sometimes is we feel like we need to dumb down our life. We need to complain about something too. We need to have a narrative to tell them. We need to have a story or some drama to share with them because we just want to give something back to them. It's really hard to say, Hey, I hate my job. I hate my man. I hate my, hate my life. You know, I want to, you know, I'm not, I'm not in a good mood. I don't have no money. And then you tell a person, oh, okay, that's cool. But I got to raise that work and everything's fine with me. So you kind of just be like, oh, okay, well, here's some bad stuff that is going on in my life. And it just becomes cyclical. And you're feeling bad and she's feeling bad and they're feeling bad. And it, to me, it's not helpful. Okay. And the part that, stick, that stuck out the most about this is having a friend who listens to you, no matter how overwhelming your rants or situation in life are, is undeniably good for your, for you and your health, but it's also undeniably selfish. Having a friend who listens to you, no matter how overwhelming your rants are, how do you know if that person had a good day? How do you know if they're, they're in a proper place emotionally to listen to your rants? How do you know if they're not going through something in their own life? And have you made the commitment to hold a safe space for them, even in the midst of your own storm? I will tell you, the majority of us do not do that. We don't do it. We're not able to say, you know what? I know you're having a bad day right now, but let me put my feelings and my thoughts aside. My car got told I just got fired and I don't have, I don't have no rent money right now. Let me put that aside to listen to your stuff. It's a skill. And not a lot of us have it. As a woman, especially when you're a mom, it is inevitable that at some point you go through a series of tough situations, which you try to bottle up until you no longer handle them. Why are you bottling up your tough situations? Beloved. Got to put my good, good Rhonda. Are you on the Zand one right now? Why, why are you bottling up your feelings? You should have an a already uh, accessible emotional outlet to your feelings, whether it be a journal, whether it be a, a, a gratitude jar, whether it be a therapist or a psychiatrist or a counselor or a, a minister or a, a altar or you pray, like however it is, or you meditate, like however it is that you are decompressing these things, it should not be dumped emotionally on somebody who may or may not be emotionally equipped to deal with it. That is the job of a therapist because your person is listening to you. You are venting. You don't want a solution. You don't want to be judged. You just want to vent. What skills are you attaining? What are you learning? How are you finding a resolution? And the more we tell our narratives, the more we tell our stories, the more married we are to them, the more it, it launches emotional triggers, our heartbeats, races, our, you know, our, our, we, we start pacing the floors, we get into it. Like the more we tell these negative narratives, the more it puts us in the same emotional space that, that you were in when the situation happened, it keeps us stuck. There was a trauma that I had in my life and it, it wasn't that bad. It was just a betrayal that happened amongst a family member. And I had, I, I promise you, I spent like five years telling the same story to anybody who would listen. Same story. And then I went to, to therapy one day and I swear to God, I was just like, I'm not going to tell that story again. I'm not going to tell the story again. People want to know why me and this person fell out. It was a real big thing. I was, I was completely blindsided and betrayed and hurt. Flabbergasted and conflummoxed <laughs> by the behavior. But I'm not telling that story again. 
because I can't move on from it if I keep telling that story. My relationship can't move forward. I can't move on from it. And it leaves me stuck in a place that I no longer live in that place. I no longer live in that place. And, and, and at some point I had to say, you know what? That situation was a catalyst for me being in the, the better place and opportunity that I am right now. Oprah used to have a saying that sometimes God sends, sometimes God will send roadblocks. And if you drive over them, he eventually he gonna send a wall. That situation was my wall. So I'm able to look at it from a space of gratitude now, knowing that I would not have all that I have now. Like it, it was, literally, it was like a situation that was like dominoes. That thing on top of thing on top of thing on top of thing led to me being where I am right now and having having the, the amazing career that I have right now, having the, the emotional clarity and capacity to do what I do for a living. It led me to going to seek help from a therapist to be able to gain the necessary skills that I had to beat depression. So while I'm still looking at that person out of the side of my eye, to be honest with you, I've forgiven them. I've moved on. I've been able to move forward. I've been able to recultivate the relationship with them. But fool me once. I know where the boundaries are and ain't nobody crossing my boundaries. Not nobody because I got a sniper on a water tower waiting for you if you do. But it is what it is. Stop telling these narratives. So if you have a vent buddy, I really truly want you to start to think about ways that you could be protective of what you tell that person, hold safe spaces for that person to be able to reciprocate to you what they're going through and what their feelings are and what they're dealing with. Be able to hold a safe space for them no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what challenges that you face, because that's what a reciprocal relationship is. And if you are not being able to do those things or if you have not mastered those things or if you have not even tried to learn how to do those things, then you are a user and you are a taker. And it's not a give and take relationship. And if you want to use somebody and you don't want a reciprocal relationship, get yourself a therapist because you could come to me and tell me anything you want to in the confines of my office and it stays between us and I'm not judging you and I'm not going to bring it up later and I'm not going to throw it in your face and you ain't going to hear it out on the streets or the interwebs or whatever. I'm not going to gossip about you. And you'll be able to, to gain skills and knowledge to be able to heal from those things. And I won't let you wallow in it. And I, I, I won't allow a situation to your identity to be reduced to one situation or one station in life or one, one mistake that you've made. And I won't keep bringing it up. Like if you really want all a vent, buddy, you should get yourself a therapist. Because you find yourself venting all the time about what's going on in your life, then that means that you probably need a different kind of skill set to learn how to set different goals and how to shift and pivot and how to see what's going on in your life that's not working and to see what is going on in your life that is working and be able to do more of that and be able to build on a foundation of the things that is not working. A lot of us look at failure and a lot of us have failure to launch, are afraid to even try. are scared to be better. I mean, I, that comment that my client said this week, I'm, I'm, it, I've thought about it about five, six times since it happened because it's so true. A lot of us are afraid to do the work because if we do the work, then we got to deal with the consequences and cleaning the mess up. And it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. What's the alternative? Okay. So this was pretty much a, a short show, 
But I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Black Therapist Podcast. Okay, so if you are not on our mailing list, I don't know what you're waiting for. But over the next few weeks, I am um, launching some new features on my website. I'm developing some things and I would love your input. I would love for you to be a part of it. There are some low cost and some free uh, opportunities that are going to come up for you guys to be able to work with me. And so if you are not on the mailing list, make sure you go and sign up for the mailing list at Black Therapist Podcast contacts. Or if you go on at BlackTherapistPodcast.com, um, you'll be able to sign up to the mailing list. So you can shoot me an email at BlackTherapistPodcast at Gmail. If you are not following us on social, you can go ahead and do that at Black Therapist Podcast. On Instagram, I have no idea what it is on Twitter, to be honest with you. I think it's Black Therapy Pod because we can't say therapist for whatever reason. I don't know. Just check the check the interwebs, girl. Um, or guys. Shout out to the guys that are listening and the girls that are listening <laughs> to the episode. I always just assume I'm talking to my ladies. Hello, ladies. But men, you are definitely welcome here in this space. Um... If you are a therapist and you want to be on the show, please reach out to me because I'm looking to do more therapy um, episodes and I want to make a platform for you for you guys. I've really been trying to prioritize and get some of my friends on the show in the beginning of the season and people that I actually know, because part of what we do here is be able to create a platform for the listeners to be a resource for them when they're going through mental health issues. And a lot of people hit me behind the scenes, like I'm looking for a therapist here and I'm looking for a therapist there. And then I put it out to my network to see who I could refer you guys to. But if you heard a therapist on the website, I mean, on the show and they sound cool here, then that would give you more of a, of a basis or understanding of knowing if that's somebody that you want to work with. So therapists, if you are listening, I have a wide audience. And there are going to be some other opportunities for you guys to advertise on the shows. If you are somebody and you're listening and you feel like your brand is in alignment with mine, just make sure that you contact me. But I definitely want to get more interviews up this season. I told you in the past it has been a challenge, but I'm going to try to work out the kinks and uh, feature more therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, social activists, social justice warriors, politicians, if you are you know, mentally health conscious and you are willing to, you know, put your, put your power where your, your mouth is <laughs> and help support some mental health initiatives that make a difference in the communities of color, then please feel free to reach out. Okay. So that has been this episode of Black Therapist Podcast. Be well. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Black Therapist Podcast. Once again, you can follow us on all our social media sites at Black Therapist Podcast on Instagram and on Twitter, as well as Black in Therapy on Facebook. Or you can follow your host, me, Miss M-S-N-I-K-I, thanks, on Instagram and Twitter, as well as you can find out any information about me at Nikita, N-I-K-I-T-A, banks.com, and on the show's website, blacktherapist.com podcast.com and don't forget if you want to send us any general feedback show suggestions uh, show topics or guest ideas please feel free to drop us an email at blacktherapistpodcast at gmail.com thank you be well